Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and I'm about to say goodbye to my TBR as it is. I'm moving to Germany and I can't take all of my books with me. I have already sorted through my red books and packed up the ones that I want to take with me and now I'm going to do the same with my TBR and I thought I'd take you along on that adventure. There are 60 books on my TBR. I don't want to take all of them with me. I know when I did my moving to Germany announcement video, lots of you suggested sending the books over, not cutting down on the TBR and just taking all the books with me. And uh, yes, while I'm probably going to send some of the books over, I'm not, I'm not opposed to uh, posting some of my books. There is just no reason for me to hold on to all of the books that are on this TBR. There are 60 books on this TBR. I counted just before I started this video. I don't have a limit of how many books I want to keep. I'm not saying I want to cut it down to half the size. If I manage to, that would be great. If I don't manage to, that's fine as well. So we're doing this very, very free form, doing this without limitations, without restrictions. My criteria are pretty much going to be how likely am I to read the book in question in the next year? If I look at a book and I just don't feel that connection to it, I don't feel like I really want to open it up and read it straight away, then it's going to go. Books are not unique objects. Most books are not unique objects anyway. So if I find that I'm really missing this one book that I unhauled back in Wales, I'm probably going to be able to get hold of it again. These books are not the only ones in the world, other copies have been printed. Well, with that in mind, let's get started. Let's start with uh, this corner over here. And the first book shouldn't really be on my TBR because it is not to be read. It is in fact being read, although I haven't picked it up in a few weeks. This is Brighton Rock by Graham Greene. I have unfortunately slightly destroyed the dust jacket, which is a bit heartbreaking because this is quite an old copy of the book. This edition is from 1950. The book itself is from 1938. But, you know, the book itself is still in reasonably good nick. And I am 256 pages into this 350 page book. I don't know what it's doing on the TBR, but obviously this is going on the keep pile. No, and I'm just going to, I'm going to put the keep books in here and then I'll show you later what I'm keeping and what I'm getting rid of. The next one <laughs> is a book I bought in a antiquarian bookshop last time I was in Germany. Okay listen don't judge me for this cover okay? Do not judge me for buying this book based entirely on the cover. Other than the cover this hasn't got much going for it. I don't know what it's about and I'm not really that bothered about finding out. I mean, I mean, I mean. It's not coming with me. I don't know what to do with the German books that I'm unhauling here because I don't think the local charity shop wants them. Maybe they do. I know that the Oxfam in my town has got a foreign language literature section. So maybe I'll put all of my German books in a separate bag and take them to that Oxfam. Next up we have, oh this is already falling over, Mary Beard's Women and Power, which is a manifesto as it says. Uh, this was a gift from Bill and I know lots of booktubers have read and enjoyed this tiny little book about uh, women in, and power throughout history. Children. I'm quite keen to read this, so this is going on the keep pile. This one is uh, Die schärfsten Gerichte der Tartarischen Küche by Alina Bronski. And this was actually sent to me by the booktuber Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. Although I think she's quit booktube or at least she hasn't uploaded for a while. But she did send me this book which she herself absolutely loved. Apparently it's hilarious and uh, it has been translated into English and I feel like a few booktubers have talked about this, but obviously this is the original German version of it. Yeah, I'm definitely holding on to that. I'm very keen to read this. This on the other hand is another German book. Uh, this is a collection of Bertolt Brecht poems. Who am I trying to kid? 
I am not going to get into poetry with this book. As you know, I struggle with poetry. I, it just doesn't speak to me. I have to say German poetry speaks to me more than English poetry. I can get this anywhere in Germany. Anytime I feel like reading Bertolt Brecht poems, I can probably pick up a copy. And also, I cannot see myself picking this up anytime soon. I don't think it's going to be something I feel drawn to at the moment. I think it's going. Then we get to a thriller, 13 by Steve Kavanagh. I read so many good opinions about this. I've read lots of uh, really good reviews, but I don't think I'm going to miss it if I leave this here. I might hand this over to Robin. She does like a good thriller and this one has a praise from her favorite thriller author Claire McIntosh. So this is staying behind, maybe going to Robin if she wants it and if not it's going to the charity shop. Right, speaking of Robin, the reason why I have Rapture by Caroline Duffy is entirely because of her, because this is another poetry collection that she read, I believe in school, and when we went on one of our charity shop adventures together, she spotted this and told me to buy it. But similar to the Bertolt Brecht, I just cannot see myself voluntarily picking up a work of poetry anytime soon. But then it would be something to remind me of Robin when we live in different countries. Plus it's a tiny little book. This isn't gonna take up much space in a box. Like I said, it was recommended by her. Oh, it's going on the keep pile. Okay. Next book is Exit Brexit by Kate Connolly. This is an interesting book. Kate Connolly is a British author. Ooh. Getting pin pins and needles already and I'm still <laughs> in the first like quarter of the TBR pile. Anyway, Kate Connolly is a British author. I think she writes for The Guardian. She's based in Berlin and this is her story of applying for German citizenship after the Brexit referendum. This book has not been published in English, even though the German is a translation. It was translated by Kirsten Rieselmann, but the English version, version has not been published. I'm not sure if it is going to be published or if this was always intended for the German market. Anyway, uh, this is definitely coming with, this is actually a uh, signed copy, which she signed for the bookshop in my hometown. Haven't read this yet, but I feel like it's going to be very relevant to my life very soon. We continue with the German books. This is Meister der Täuschung by Sabine Ebert. This is a chunker of a historical novel. I remember being in my local bookshop in my hometown and just taking lots of photos of uh, various books that sounded interesting. I, I'm sure I spent at least two hours in the bookshop. I was just taking pictures and posting them to my Instagram story, asking for recommendations, going, German-speaking book people, can you please tell me if this is good or not? And I got a lot of recommendations for this one. Uh, it's a historical novel set in the 12th century. It's the first of a four-part series, I believe. And yeah, of course it's coming with. This is Michael Ende, Die Zauberschule und andere Geschichten. Michael Ende is a German children's author, no, a German classic children, a German children's author, classic, He's a children's author who is very, very well beloved in Germany. I grew up with his stories and when I was an adult I read his stories to other children when I was babysitting. They are wonderful stories. Do I feel like reading a German children's short story collection anytime soon? Especially since his books are going to be everywhere in Germany. No, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to put this on the today pile. Next we have, ah, this is also a German children's classic, well, young adult classic. This is Die Mitte der Welt by Andreas Steinhöfel. And again, I read this when I was a teenager. I bought this in a German secondhand shop. They exist, they are rare, but they exist. I bought that last year because I really fancied rereading it. The first time around, I remember borrowing this book from the school library, which was just a tiny room in the basement of my school. Uh, so I've never owned a copy of this. And for that reason, I am going to keep this. Then we have two 
French classics that were gifted to me by the publisher. This is an edition, Scalic edition, and they are English translations of two French classics. They should be out by the time that this video is being published or coming out very shortly. Uh, this one is short, a short story collection called The Woman and the Wolf and Other Stories by René Vivian. I'm sure all of my French watchers are loving the pronunciation of this. And this one is called Three Rival Sisters and it is also, I believe this is a novella and then some short stories uh, by Marie-Louise Gagneur. Oh, look at me being so French. I am keeping these. I'm actually quite excited about these. I am planning to read them hopefully this year because I have yet to read any French classics written by women. Moving on to another German book. This is Jenny Erpenbeck, Gehen gehen gegangen. Uh, Jenny Erpenbeck is another favorite author of uh, Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. Her channel will be linked in the description box even though she hasn't done any uploads recently. You should still check her out for anything German literature related. Uh, she really likes this author. I have never read one of her books. However, Mel did not enjoy this particular book. But because she is such a fan of the author, I think I'm going to keep this and give this a go and form my own opinion about it. William Golding, Lord of the Flies. I don't know, this is a very controversial book. Some people love it, some people hate it. I don't know how I feel about it because I haven't read it yet. But I do like a 20th century classic and for that reason I am keeping this. Margaret Forster, over. This was part of the five pound charity shop challenge that I did with Robin. I'll link that video in the description box down below. It was so much fun. We took five pounds each to the charity shops and then tried to find books for each other. And this was one of the books that she got for me. However, I don't think this is something I will want to read anytime soon. It seems to be like a contemporary sort of family history type novel, quite heavy. And I just don't feel the vibe from this. So this is going on the Danae pile. Back up here again. Our next book is Tilly, the ugliest cat in the shelter. How I rescued her and she rescued me from best-selling author Celia Haddon. I love a good heartwarming cat story. This is another one that came out of the Five Pound Charity Shop Challenge, I believe. Or maybe another video I did with Robin. I definitely remember her being in the charity shop when I bought this book. Can I just talk about the cover? Because it's called The Ugliest Cat in the Shelter and the model on the picture is this perfectly adorable, gorgeous little tortoiseshell kitten. Talk about miscasting. But other than the inadequate cover, I think I'm going to hold on to this because I expect this is going to be super adorable. Next up we have three books from the Books of Bayern series by Shannon Hale. They are Enna Burning, River Secrets and Forest Born. The first book in the series, which is in my red pile, well it's not a red pile, it is a red box because they're already boxed up. The first book in this series called The Goose Girl I already read and I've already done a review video for, I'll link that in the description box, but the entire series was also gifted to me by the wonderful Cara from Wild Book Garden, uh, a booktube channel that I'm sure you're familiar with, and if not, link in the description box. She sent me these because she thought I'd enjoy them, and she was right. The first book in the series was absolutely wonderful, and so of course I'm going to hold on to the other three so I can complete the series. Right, we're getting into some classics here. I've got an edition of Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy. Please don't complain about the sticker, okay? Every time, every time I show a book with a charity shop sticker on the front, people complain about it. And every time, it's probably a sticker that I've already tried to remove, like this one, and where clearly if I try and remove this, the whole cover is coming off. Do not complain to me about this. Redirect your complaints to Cat's Protection, because that's the charity shop that I bought this from. I have not yet read any Thomas Hardy, but I am planning to. Thomas Hardy seems to be almost universally beloved. I feel like all of my favorite classics booktubers really like him and uh, I trust them. So this is staying on the pile. 
what have we here? This is uh, Altes Land by Dörte Hansen. My mum bought me this book. Um, my mum doesn't really read much, especially not in German. And she was recommended this by a bookseller. Looking at the blurb on the back, I just don't think this is for me. Next is a book that isn't mine. This is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This uh, belongs to Robin, uh, so I'll return it to her. Then we have a graphic novel adaptation of Anne Frank's diary. And this was gifted to me by my brother. I can't remember if he has read it or if he's just heard good things about it, uh, but apparently this is a really wonderful adaptation of the original Anne Frank diary, which I read many years ago. And I'm keeping this. And this is by Sid Jacobson and Ernie Colon. All right, next up, Gaston Leroux, The Phantom of the Opera, in a German translation, another French classic that I haven't read, uh, but I am planning to, and I may as well read the German translation since I have it, so that's staying. Next up, another book that I don't own. This is Claire Mackintosh's Let Me Lie. I'm pretty sure this is Robin's edition of it. I will return this to the rightful owner. Up here we have a book that I was gifted by a friend, and this is called Twelve Angels Weeping. Uh, Twelve stories from the villains of Doctor Who, by Dave Rudden. Um, I like Doctor Who. I have not been overwhelmed so far with the books that I've read, the Doctor Who tie-in novels, but I'm gonna give this a go. Okay, next up we have Sally Magnuson's The Seal Woman's Gift. Another absolutely beautiful cover. And this is a historical novel set in the 17th century. <sighs> you know what? I am not sure about this. I'm going to put this on the donate pile for now because I'm not sure about it. Like I, and I said earlier, if I don't feel an immediate vibe from the book, then I'm not going to keep it. So I'm going to put it on the donate pile, but I can't promise that this won't get rescued at last minute. Let's move on to a couple of Daphne du Maurier classics. My Cousin Rachel, also known as the one book that is in every single charity shop in the country. And yes, I know, it has another one of these stickers that I can't get rid of. Cats Protection as well, clearly they are the worst offenders for this. And the second is Jamaica Inn. I've heard great things about both of these novels. So far I have only read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, but I enjoyed that one very much. So I expect I'll like these two as well, and they are both going on the keep pile. Next, this is Star of the Sea by Joseph O'Connor, and this is another historical novel about a journey from Ireland to New York. Uh, I'm not sure about this. <sighs> no, my heart says no. I've listened to my heart and it says, you're not gonna read this in the next year. So off it goes. What have we here? Ruth Paddle, 52 Ways of Looking at a Poem. Quite a grimy edition. This one's got a few stains on the cover, but that's what you get with charity shop books occasionally. And this is uh, kind of a guide, I guess, to reading poetry. Yeah, I think you know what's going to happen to this one. I just don't feel the pull to poetry right now, so I'm getting rid of this. We are now in the second half of the TBR, and next up we have Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak, Russian classic. I have not read any Russian classics yet, but I hear great things about this one, so this is staying. This is a beautiful edition of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. I'm not particularly keen on reading this one. So even though this is a very, very pretty book, I, I don't feel like I'm going to uh, want to read this anytime soon. So this is going away. This one is uh, Frank Schätzing der Schwarm, another book I bought secondhand in Germany. And I bought this because I remember this being talked about quite a lot when I was a teenager when this came out. But other than that, I don't feel a particular connection to it. So this is not coming with. This uh, was a birthday present from Bill for this year. And it is a Terry Pratchett book called The Unadulterated Cat. Terry Pratchett, known for his Discworld novels, wrote a book about cats. Why would I not want this? This sounds amazing. Then we have five... Discworld novels, also by Terry Pratchett, and I feel like half of them shouldn't be on my TBR because I'm pretty sure I've read some of these. Reaper Man, I'm pretty sure I've read. Masquerade, 
I don't believe I have. Mort, pretty sure I've read that. Moving Pictures, I've definitely read this. And Hogfather, the Christmas one. Uh, all of these are coming with. Some of these are probably going to go on my red bookshelf when I'm in Germany uh, rather than on my TBR because I'm pretty sure I've read two, possibly three of these already. Over here we have The Sixth Wife by Jean Blady. This is a historical fiction about one of Henry VIII's wives, I believe. And even though this is a historical fiction classic, I'm not really particularly drawn to this. Next up, uh, Marge Piercy, Body of Glass. I got this one for the inaugural uh, 20th century dystopian fiction readathon, which I hosted earlier this year. It was called End of the World Week. Um, all about 20th century dystopian fiction, but I didn't get to this one. This is commonly quoted as one of the most influential feminist dystopian novels um, alongside The Handmaid's Tale, and I'm still very interested in reading this, so keeping that. Oh, here we have another few Terry Pratchett's. So we have uh, Wintersmith, which is also a Discworld novel, and Good Omens, which is his novel in collaboration with Neil Gaiman, and I'm going to keep both of them. Over here, what have we got? We've got some Victorian classics that I didn't get to this Victober. Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell and Dracula by Bram Stoker. Both of these I still fully intend to read, so they are staying on the keep pile, even though I have to say I did not like North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell when I read that. But Cranford could be a very different novel. And then next up, I've got another German novel, Das Ratzenest, by Hermann Alexander Neugard. This is a mid-20th century publication, which is about my hometown. It's a historical novel. It's uh, set in the Thirty Year War, I believe. This book is very close to my heart. I've been searching for this for a very long time, and then I finally found it last year. I paid a ridiculous amount of money, more than I've ever paid for any other second-hand book. This cost me 25 25 euros and only because I haggled the bookseller down from 34 euros. Obviously I'm holding on to that. Okay we are really getting to the end of it now. Next up we have two Philip Pullman books. One is the His Dark Materials trilogy. This is on my TBR because I've been meaning to reread the third book for a very long time. I have actually read this entire series previously, but it, that's many years ago and I don't remember much about it. I read the first two books, I think 2018, and I just haven't got to the third one yet, so that's coming with me. And then we have the first book of the Book of Dust series, which is a sequel, prequel. It's connected to his Dark Materials. This is coming with me almost entirely because it is signed. What's interesting about this signature is that I'm not really a Philip Pullman fan, but he happened to come and do a reading at my university. And so I got a ticket and I thought, well, since I've got a ticket, I may as well get the book signed. Then we've got another collection of poetry and this is by Rainer Maria Rilke, The Book of Images. And this is a edition that is two languages. So you have the German on one side and the English on the other side. This was sent to me by Andrea from Infinite Text and uh, I think this might be the only poetry book that I'm actually keeping. I thought it was wonderful that she sent me a book and as you can possibly tell by the bookmark I have actually read into this and the poems that I read from that I did really enjoy. And Rilke is I feel like one of those poets who's very accessible, at least if you read him in German. I, I can't speak for English translations of these poems. I don't know how well they work. But I found the poems that I have read from him, I did enjoy. Two books that have been sent to me by the publisher. This one is Harim by Rafi. This is a Armenian classic, first published in 1874 and translated into English by Bayon Miloyan and Kimberly McFarlane. Can we talk about this cover? So pretty. Uh, yeah, other than that, I am quite keen on getting to this. It's a very short book. It's a novella and a historical novel. It is set in the late 18th century, but like I said, published in 1874. I'm very interested in this and it is going on my keep pile. This one, on the other hand, God's Children by Mably Roberts, um, is a contemporary historical fiction. So this only came out last year and it is about Kate Marsden, a real life 
historical figure, an adventurer who travelled to Siberia. I started reading this and then I just stopped. I'm not entirely sure why, but I know that uh, Katie from Books and Things really enjoyed this, so I think I'm going to give this another go. We have Blood Sisters by Julie Shaw, which is a thriller set in the 80s. I've kind of gone off thrillers a little bit. I, I mean, I was never really into thrillers, but lately I haven't read any and I haven't felt the need to read any, so I think this is going on the donate pile. Then we have Alexander McCall Smith's the number one ladies detective agency. I have heard many wonderful things about this book, uh, including by some friends who've read it, so keeping that. Then we have Ali Smith's Autumn. I'm pretty sure I have Spring by Ali Smith lying around as well, but I don't know where that is. Anyway, Ali Smith's Autumn. Uh, it's a very divisive book. I feel like many people love it, many people hate it. I don't know where I'm going to fall, but I definitely want to find out, so this is staying. Uh, this is Lila Lila by Martin Suter, another book sent to me by Mel from Mel's Booklet Adventure. She uh, left this adorable sticky note which says, enjoy Mel on it. I very much trust her opinion of books, so I'm keeping this. An 18th century classic is next with Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy this a whole lot or not. I feel like, again, this is a very mixed opinion book. Some people love it, some people hate it, but... I'm going to keep this because I want to know if I like it. This is a book that I rescued from Robin's clutches because we were in a car. Obviously, this was pre-pandemic. This was last year sometime. And I don't even remember where we were driving, but, but she drove up to a donation bin. I was going to get rid of this. Um, it is The Small House at Allington by Anthony Trollope. This is part of his... Barsetshire novel series. I think this is the fourth or fifth one in, so it isn't the first in the series, but it is this gorgeous Folio Society edition. And as that, I have to keep it, even though I'm not going to read this until I've read the other books in the series. I've never read an Anthony Trollope book, but again, many of my favorite classics booktubers really like his novels. So I'm holding on to this. And finally, a book that it has been on my TBR. This is like by far the oldest book on my TBR. This has been on my TBR since I was about seven, eight, since long before I had a TBR. This is called Die Grauen und die Grünen Felder by Ursula Wölfe. I know nothing about this book. Considering that this has been on my TBR for over 20 years, I'm probably not going to read it now. So this is going on the donate pile. And this is the final result. Over here, these are the books that I'm keeping. And over here, these are the books that I'm donating. And if you count it, as I expect all of you did, you'll notice that I am getting rid of 16 books out of 60. So I'm getting rid of about a quarter of my TBR. And I'm quite happy with that. The next step is to box up these books and then I'm probably going to post them to Germany so I expect I'm going to probably take out two or three so that I've got some reading material now in the next few weeks and the rest is going to get shipped over to Germany very soon. And these books are all going to the charity shop except for the ones that belong to Robin which are going to be returned to her. That was it. Hope you enjoyed this unhaul. Sorry to disappoint you if you were expecting me to get rid of most of my books and sorry to disappoint you if you were expecting me to get rid of none of my books but I'm quite happy with the split. Oh, and if you want more sort of moving type videos that aren't book related, then you should subscribe to my second channel, Claudia's House, linked in the description box. That's probably going to have some more packing, moving and unhauling vlogs that are not about books. Thank you for watching. Bye.